So you did a story on The Athletic where you went and you did a, your, your mock top 10. And what you did is you went and talked to rival coaches of all the players because they're the most honest. Yep. You know, college coaches are always trying to sell their guys. I totally get it for their program. The rival will tell you the truth. So let, let's start. Let's show people um, um, Bruce has his mock draft. So I was told by scouts I trust that Aiden Hutchison was the safest pick. It's a position that has rare talent. There's not You get about one great pass rusher, maybe two a draft. He plays really hard. He was well coached. What are the coaches that faced Michigan's Aiden Hutchison in college? What are they saying about him? They say he's even more impressive uh, when you see him in the games as opposed to what they watch on film. They said he is, plays strong, plays violent. He's a really good athlete. He has a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can do scheme-wise. Um, they love, and this is something that's come up a lot around the Michigan program, about how committed to football he is, just to being the best he can. There's a drive there, but really good change of direction. He pretty much checks off every box. Right. And so when people say safest pick, I think they know they're going to get a guy who's probably going to go to a bunch of Pro Bowls. He may, Now, he who is he going to be J.J. Watt? He's not 290 pounds, but who else is J.J. Watt? But he can be a big-time player. And as the league becomes more quarterback-driven, edge rusher has become massively important. So he's a position of need. Now, conversely, uh, Kayvon Thibodeau from Oregon is an edge rusher. So I talked to a GM about a week ago who likes him and thinks he is a top 10 pick, closer to 10, but there are concerns about him. What did the rival coaches say about the Oregon pass rusher? The, the biggest concerns are that he plays in spurts and he disappears in some games. People really like his physical tools in terms of yes. great get-off. Now, he's not that big. He's 254 yeah, pounds. You, you can whatever. see that if we show video. He's not huge. No, we're not talking about Miles Garrett size. We're not talking about no. Chase Young, That's Jadavian right. Clowney, the Boses. He's not that. He's smaller. He does have really good get off, but there are concerns about he disappears in games. There's also some, some concerns about how committed to football. I've heard he? I heard the same thing from somebody I trust. Um, he's got a little he got a little star power. He, he does. Now remember, as you know, he was the top. He was the number one recruit in the country, and he has been anointed for a long time. And I don't think anybody thinks he's a bad kid at all. It's just in terms of. I think there's some things that maybe give people concern about the commitment and the dedication. Is football the most important thing to him? There are some times where some comments he's made probably rankle people in combination with him disappearing in games and like, hey, how come he didn't dominate against this opponent? They weren't very good. So that I don't want to say he's the boomer bust guy. It may be a really good thing. I have him going eight to the Falcons. It may be a good thing for him long term if he falls out of the top five and then is like in the mood of I'm going to show everybody they were wrong and I'm going to play with a with a passion and practice and and work with a passion in terms of my preparation to prove everybody wrong. <coughs> I, I was told it's a very good receiver draft. It's not a great receiver draft. <coughs> you have Drake London at USC going number one he's off an injury uh he's a basketball player so you'll, you'll see it when he plays he, he like he boxes out big catching radius doesn't blow past anybody what do the rivals say about him first of all as you said he was a elite basketball player growing up by the way he's he won't turn 21 till late july so he's still pretty young he's 6'4 220 he they said football functional speed is really good he may not time great yeah but he he really can move well when you see him in pads. The other thing that I heard was he reminds people of, of Mike Evans, who is also a high-level basketball player coming out of high school. Not quite as big as Mike Evans, but close. Mike Evans ran really well, probably better than people realized until he got through the, the draft process. People were like, whoa, he surprised some people with his speed. I think there's a lot of parallels there. He, his ball skills are so good yes. that – Unlike, you know, you have the two Ohio State receivers who are both really good, but neither one, while they have good ball skills, are as big or close to as big as what we're talking about, Drake London. And keep in mind, as you well know, that was a disaster of a program last year at USC, and he was the one thing they had going, and he played hard, and, and I think you have to give him a lot of respect for what he did on a dreadful team when everything else was falling apart around him. He was going 100 miles an hour. And by the way, don't consider basketball to soften him up. 
you're not bringing him down with a small corner. That dude runs hard. Like, and, and look who we learned under. By the way, Michael Pittman was a really – he was like a linebacker playing receiver, and yes. that's who he kind of st was behind early on in his career. So I think he had a good example of a guy who had a linebacker mentality playing receiver, similar-sized guy, and um, you know probably the ball skills are even better in this kid's case. So Sauce Gardner played for Cincinnati. He's a corner. He was so good in college, nobody threw to his side. Is there an argument to be made – that Aiden Hutchison plays a more valuable position, but Sauce Gardner's the best player in the draft? Yeah, I think a lot of people may think that. I mean, you're talking about a really long corner who runs well. The coaches I talked to, who like one of them said, you know, we were going to try to go at him, and then we realized on the first series, this will be a disaster. You know, he's <laughs> baiting our quarterback. He's going to, you know, all of a sudden it's going to be a pick six on this play. They said he is really savvy, recognizes concepts. Like, he's checking off every box. And by the way, the other corner on the other side – a kid named Kobe Bryant was a really, really good corner too. He got the work because nobody wanted to mess with Sauce Gardner. Okay, so you have um, the Panthers. I think they're going to take Malik Willis, but you're more tied in than me. You have him taking Kenny Pickett. The two picks in your top 10 I worry about, Derek Stingley at LSU, I think has, and Kenny Pickett, if you told me things didn't work, I wouldn't be shocked. Let's talk Pickett. Why do you why do you have him going before Malik Willis? What are his rival coaches saying? All right, so start with the fit here. So Matt Rule is obviously his seat is getting warm. They have struggled, right? Very warm. So Matt Rule actually at, back when he was before he was at Baylor was the coach at Temple. Kenny Pickett was actually committed to him at one point in high school. So there is familiarity. I think Matt Rule and and his staff knows that you have a guy who is a very mature quarterback, has played a lot of football. He came from a pro-style West Coast offense. He has done a lot of the things in terms of scheme-wise that can translate to the NFL. Yeah. He's a good athlete. I don't know if people give him enough credit. He moves for his, well. He does move well. And if you look at the Clemson game, he did make big-time throws. Does he have Josh Allen's arm? Does he have Malik's arm? Probably not to that caliber, but he has a good enough arm. And I think when you talk to people who face them, they're like, he's a really, really good college quarterback, and they think he will translate well. And I think he's more ready to come in, whereas Malik, who has a cannon for an arm, but okay. came from Hugh Freeze's system, which is RPO heavy, um, there's some consistency concerns a little bit, and I think there is... Is he going to be ready to jump into an NFL system immediately and hit the ground running? So I think in terms of if you're the Panthers and you need to to get it going a little sooner, he may be the safer pick. In yeah, Kenny yeah. And by the way, most of these coaches don't have Kyle Shanahan or Matt Lafleur's uh, luxury with Aaron Rodgers or an eight years left on their contract. Most coaches want to play guys, yeah. right? So um, you know, whenever the draft hits. Uh, it's never as good as they say a great draft is. It's never as bad as a, a bad draft. So this doesn't have much star power. Uh, it's good O-line, wide receiver, there's plenty, and that seems to be kind of a trend. Everybody's passing. It used to be college football would give you these offensive linemen who could road grade but couldn't pass block. Now they can pass block. So there's yeah. a bunch of good offensive linemen. Um, the you, kid got a, you got a bunch of athletes on the defensive side from Georgia. And because they were on a loaded team, you're going to see a bunch of guys in the front seven go. Um, you have Trayvon Walker going second. Second. People rave about his physical potential. He's a long 270, 275 pound guy, runs exceptionally well, plays the run really well. And I think people sometimes get lost in the stats and they overlook the fact that that defense was so deep. There oh. were so many guys that were rotating guys in. People know about N'Kobe Dean, who was. You know, the, the leader of the defense was a, won the Butkus. They know about Jordan Davis because he's 340 pounds and ran in the four sevens. The other guys, the two walkers, are long and really dynamic athletes. Uh, you have just a, a, a bunch of dudes that I think maybe there's not the, the star neck recognition name. You know, the, probably the best defensive player in the SEC is still in the SEC, Will Anderson, because he can't come out. That's the linebacker at Alabama. But the Georgia guys do not undersell how how impressive that group is going to yeah. be. Yeah, well, when I watch Georgia and Alabama play, Georgia's defense, and this hasn't happened much in 15 years, was better than Alabama's defense. Yeah. Like way faster and way deeper. Uh, Bruce Feldman's joining us. So I got to ask you about this, uh, not just because I'm a, a, a homer, 
but um, I have tried. I have a lot of USC friends. I've heard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I'm marginalized as a fight on Homer. All right. Whatever. So here's my I tell everybody at USC. That's what I tell them. Just be fun to watch this year. You're not going to be great because you don't have two guys that could start defensively for Ohio State. Now, offensively, I think you'll be pretty interesting, way better coached. So you give give me a two-minute spiel on, if you're a USC fan, oh, Lincoln Riley's here, the transfer portal. Listen, the transfer portal, you're not getting five-star guys that everybody, they're leaving for a reason, right? Like Shane Lee, the linebacker from Alabama, is yeah. leaving because they wasn't playing. So what is realistic, Lincoln Riley, USC, first year? I think nine wins is realistic. Whoa! Because the, everything went wrong for them, and they won four games. The Pac-12 is not the is not the SEC. It's not even the Big Ten, right? So that is there for the taking. You inherit a quarter. You bring in a quarterback in Caleb Williams, who's very talented. He's played some. He hasn't played a ton, but he had more good than bad last year. He knows Lincoln Riley's system. Yeah, he knows the system. That's, that's key. That's big. You get a running back who I I don't know if people outside the West Coast realize just how productive Travis Dye was. Travis Dye is a Southern California kid. Went up to Oregon, crushed, put up huge numbers in Joe Moorhead's offense. I think he will have similar impact in Lincoln, Lincoln Riley's offense. Um, they because of the transfer portal, you can upgrade faster, right? But the defense, to me, that's the biggest issue. Is they are so were so bad on defense personnel wise that I think it's going to take time to upgrade that. But I do think again, you're not facing. Even Oregon, which I think has the most talent in the in the conference, they they have a new coaching staff. They're going to play Georgia in Week One. The, you know they're missing a bunch of dudes too, right? So I, I look at the league and say, you know, you're going to be in every game. You're going to ha- they're going to probably have to be outscored, and there's going to be a, it's going to feel a lot like the Big Twelve from five years ago. But now, and this is to me the biggest thing, they have an identity. When was the last time USC had an identity? Lincoln Riley will bring that. And don't underestimate what a really good quarterback could do. Because remember, when they won the Rose Bowl, when they beat Saquon Barkley, Darnold Darnold was fantastic. And Darnold didn't have, now he had some good players around him, but it wasn't like he had what Matt had around him when he was, you know, at USC. There was no, there was no uh, guys on the D line of that caliber. There was no guys in the back end. And so I think if you have a big time quarterback, and they do, and you have a, a great offensive system, which they do, and they have some pieces. I think they can win. They can win nine. I wouldn't be shocked if they won more than that, but wow. I wouldn't. I would not bank on it because look at the schedule. They're not opening up with Alabama, you know, like they were gonna a couple of years ago. So I think they can get a little bit momentum. But I do think a bunch of games are going to be toss-up games. Utah will be more physical than them because they always are. UCLA last year, you know, kicked their tails because they're more physical. So those games are going to be tough games. But when you look at it, I think they have a chance to get some momentum. And I think nine, nine wins to me feels realistic. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.